Today, I'm trying to get my snowblower running. We've had a kind of a mild winter, but it was time we got the first snowfall. And my little Toro um, CCR power light, three horsepower, wouldn't fire, wouldn't run. And usually I could pull start it. It's just the way I am. But it's also got an electric start, so I figured I'd try that. Well, it failed, and I've already been in working on this to, to deal with that. Now I've got to find out why it doesn't run, and I'm strongly suspecting carburetor. Um, I repaired the carburetor on this, you know, put a new needle and seat and kit and stuff in it like about, mm, uh, I think about three years ago. But, um, you know, it, it just doesn't want to fire no matter what you do. So I'm going to move into that and, uh, and we'll see what we find. For doing the carburetor, I'm going to have to pull the bottom off. I have drained the fuel. The service manual wants you to siphon it out. Um, sometimes I siphon, sometimes I dump it into a bucket, you know, tip it upside down. But, but you pretty much want it empty to do this kind of work. So we're going to start with pulling this bottom one loose. Got two screws and currently I'm using an 8 millimeter on that. pops up um, down basically the front of this housing. Uh, the tabs just go down here in the bottom and the front and then it goes up underneath and you put two screws in it. So that's not too bad. That's not too difficult I should say. And if you haven't drained the fuel up here you do have an option to pull this off and remove that hose. I've done that before. Getting that hose off is pretty tough though because it's a barbed fitting you know, you remove the clamp and you got to do a lot of work to get that off, but it'll come off. And it takes a half inch wrench on the fitting on the bottom of the carburetor. And I see, I'm going to get it a little bit, so. So once you get that nut out, that nut is actually the main jet. It has an orifice in the bottom of it and it picks up fuel on the sides. And we'll clean that and check it, make sure it's clear. And we drop that down. And she's got a little bit of sediment in the bowl. I'm kind of surprised I don't see a, a fuel filter in that line. Maybe something that I want to go ahead and, and add to it. So that's the float bowl. And this is a Tecumseh 3 horsepower engine. It's a Tecumseh carburetor. Um, they've got their, um, their logo and information on the bottom of the float bowl. You can check it by number, but uh, it's, like I say, Tecumseh sometimes uses other carburetors, but these are pretty common. It's a, it's a side draft carburetor for a snowblower. And uh, this is one of the older ones that's still got a brass float in it. Um, I'm going to need to turn the, turn the unit upside down. So first of all, I now have it upside down. Um, and I'm leaning it up against my garage door. You need something to help support it so it doesn't tip over. You can't really do a proper job with the carburetor right side up. And you can. I mean, there are two uh, Torx head screws here that attach the carburetor to the engine. You can remove the carburetor and the fuel line and take it inside and, you know, put it in a vise or something. But for simple stuff like this, to me, um, it's easy enough just to, like I say, flip, th flip it upside down. It isn't perfectly level, but you just need need gravity to be able to bring the float down onto the needle and seat. And I think I see what my problem is. Um, I'm going to clean a few things while it's apart, but 
look at how that float is sitting. That isn't right. I have one of these tools, the official Tecumseh 670377 tool. These things are really handy. There are ways to get around it, but it was worth 20 bucks. Um, it has a hook on this end that you can use to pick the, the seat out. I'll show you that in a minute. And it has a spot on the other end for putting a seat, new seat in. And the flat spot is the gauge for the float level. So what you're supposed to be able to do is lay that on the casting right there and the float ought to be sitting on it. So the float's like, whew, shoot, a half inch off. With the float like that, the float level will be so low there will be hardly any gas in the carburetor and it pretty sure won't run. With that being the case, I have a spare set. Um, this is the official Tecumseh service parts, um, new bowl gasket, a new seat, that little that little white dude in there is the is the seat and they use a steel needle with a spring on it and um, a new gasket for the for that main jet so now that I got it up this far apart I'm going to um, disassemble that and we're going to change the needle and seat in in this dude and readjust the float if you want to get things apart, there's a pin in here that you can see the end of there. And you don't want to just pull a pin right away. Recognize that you can see in here, in this part of it, you see that spring in there? Well, it has a tab that's bent over that goes here underneath the, uh, underneath the gasket. So when, when this is in there, in fact, sometimes you can leave the gasket on there. So you have that little spring, and it's got a tab down there, and then it has a tang that goes up against the side of the float, and it's sort of supposed to keep the float from bouncing. The caution is when you pull the pin out, um, that spring wants to fly, so you kind of want to find the tab that's on the side of the, of the float and hold on to it. And we're going to pull this guy out. Like so. Set that down. Okay, and she's free. And then you can lift the and you can lift the needle and seat out. The needle's got a uh, retainer on it, and that retainer is supposed to face forward. Um, I'm sorry. It's supposed to face toward the intake. Toward, toward the um, toward toward the choke plate. I'm gonna take off that gasket. Which the gasket's kind of nice because it it uh, did trap that spring and kind of helps keep it from from flying. This is the spring, and this long tab goes up against the float and the. And the opposite end, which just has a little bend in it, um, goes up against the, the float bowl there. So now the float, or the, um, the seat, is down in this hole. And that's why there's a, hook on, there's a hook on this tool for pulling it out. It's a soft seat. And when the float is off that far, it usually means that the rubber in that seat has swelled up and it's changed its dimension and sometimes you'll get away with readjusting the float but usually if it's off that far it's time to pull it out so we'll give it a yank here and that's what it looks like Let's see if we can tell the difference there's an there's an old one here from the last time I changed it versus the new one or versus the new one, versus the one I just pulled out. And, and you can tell, it's hard to see in the video, but 
Um, it's, it's considerably bigger in diameter than the one that I took out three years ago. And, and that's an indication that it swelled up. Now, supposedly these are Viton and they should not be damaged by gasoline, at least not very easily. And I only use non-alcohol rec fuel and I stabilize it immediately when I buy it. So it's, I'm, I'm a little bit mystified why that should swell up like that. Um, something must have happened to my gas and, you know, had that, you know, that must have attacked it, but I don't know, what can you do? So the first thing I'm going to do, though, before I get any further, you know, this is the, this is the main jet, and, you know, as I said, it's got, it's got a gasket on it. I'm going to pop that gasket off of there for right now. For this part, I'm going to use a little bit of spray carburetor cleaner. And I got some, got my nitrile gloves. These things are really, it's really hard to work on gloves when you're trying to put some of that back together, but it's a good time to use them. So I'm going to just spray this. I want to get it in your face. And if you get the light just right from the side, you can see through the hole and it looks like I have a clear opening. Uh, the book will tell you you can run a copper wire, soft copper wire through there to check it and make sure it's clean. I'm always cautious about running wire through things, I'll say ever, so um, so I usually try to get a look and see if they look clean. And this one, I've got good light coming in, it, it looks pretty good. Then, as long as it's apart, um, there are tubes down in the center here, and you want to try to Spray a little bit there, and spray a little bit in that one, and spray a little bit around the side. And I try to use a paper towel to uh, keep it from spraying back at me too much. Otherwise, it looks pretty darn good. This one takes a 631-021B Tecumseh kit. It's their original, their, you can buy aftermarket ones, but I usually try to use manufacturer's own parts. That's the little piece we're going to put in first. That's the seat. It's a soft rubber. It supposedly is Viton. And I'm going to flip it over. And you'll see that on the back side of it, it has um, it has grooves and it's even um, it's even tapered on the sides. So the grooved side goes down and then the part the seat goes on the end of the tool and then without dropping it we're going to put it in the hole where it came from and you push it down until until it bottoms out there's a there's a seat in there and when it doesn't want to go any further you've you've made it and that looks okay from here I'll just double check it one more time But, yep, yeah, that's as far as she wants to go. All right, now I'm going to have to go back to no gloves. So this, this little clip that goes on, on the steel needle, and it goes together like, it just clips on. Clips on to the top with the kind of opening to the top, because what you want to do with it is, the float has a tab on the bottom and essentially um, this needs to face toward the choke side of the carburetor and it, sh it needs to go over the top of that tab like so 
And this is kind of the this is the fun part of putting things back together is you you don't want to lose that drop it down into the engine so you, you set that down in there and drop it in the hole and see and I missed it come on there we go so when you got it hooked so that when you pick up the float the the needle comes up and down with it and then you take your pin and the pin goes in just just a touch just put it in far enough that it picks up the first leg of the um, of the float so part of the float is is hooked in and then we have to put this little this little spring back and again it goes with the with the tab with this tab down against the float bowl and this other tab um, goes up against the float so you kind of need to take it and feed it in there this will be a little fun sometimes kind of get it on the edge of the float bowl and then start pushing the pin in just a little you got to get the pin goes inside the spring and then the other part of the spring goes up against the float like so so you can see there's a tab right there and there's a tab right up here and once again you see there's a tab there and the other tab is there short tab on there a longer arm tab goes up on the float and then she sits like so and now you can see that the float is like nearly level. It's very close. And <clears throat> if you don't have one of these gauges, um, I believe it's an 11 um, size drill bit that is um, is the correct height. You gotta check the book, but that's okay. And so if you run the flat side of this gauge in here right now I'm picking up the float a little bit so I'm gonna to need to lift the float as far as I can and I need to um, bend the tab you don't want to you don't want to bend it by pushing against the seat you don't want to deform the seat um, because after you get done putting it together, it may spring back. Let's see, I'm not still not quite there yet. It's still picking up, so I got to go a little further. You can use a screwdriver. You can use a um, I can slide it in there, and it's boy, she's right there. is just touching the gauge. I'm going to say that's close enough. And so the spring is in place on both sides. Got the cleaner in there. Here's my new gasket that will go over that. So you get that rubber gasket seated and the tab of the spring goes under the gasket. All right, now we're going to put the float bowl back on. And this one's always a little bit confusing, too, because um, it's not flat on the bottom. So the question is, well, gee, which way do you put it, right? And the right way is um, there's a dimple here in the bottom in the deeper portion. You want the, the, the float should go down into the deeper portion. And they use that dimple like a stop so that if the float goes down all the way, uh, that it I guess that it can't stick to the bottom of the um, uh, the bottom of the float bowl, so you kind of want to turn it so that that dimple is like straight across from where the um, needle is. So kind of about like that. Kind of thread it on there. It doesn't want to just push. It's it's pretty snug on the threads, so. 
like so, get it down there, get around the bottom, and we thread this in, making sure that the that the float bowl seated. that guy down the half inch wrench again you want it tight so it doesn't leak but you don't want to I know there's probably a torque spec I don't know what it is but get her snug but it's brass into aluminum so you don't want to strip anything out either but looks like it's good and tight. So that is how you change the needle and seat and reset the float in one of these carburetors. All right, a little bit of gas in there. Turn it on. Oh. Very good. Well, now I can put the lower shroud on. But second pull, not too bad. We're supposed to get 10 to 12 inches of snow tonight, so I want to make sure this thing works. And I think I finally got it. Well, now you can see what it takes to go in and change the needle and seat in one of these carburetors and adjust the float and make it run. Hey, that's all for now.